pleasure to introduce Warren Pelt from uh, Vine, uh, Australia's most successful mobile phone game developer. He's going to walk through uh, some case studies. Uh, please welcome Warren to the stage. Good afternoon. So we had a nice turnout, and thank you very much. My name is Ronald Hunt. I'm the senior producer at Final <coughs> Studios, RTI in Richmond. And um, as was stated by Tony, what I do is um, we produce mobile games, and we have obtained a very good reputation so far. Um, subject for today is seven months, seven people, seven million units. Basically, um, mobile production in the spotlight. What I'm anticipating doing is giving you four case studies of um, titles we have recently finished within the last like, two years. Um, just in view so that you can see uh, how different they are from one another and what it is that um, mobile production actually entails. Um, let's see if we can get this one. Those are my four case studies up there with a sneak peek. The question that was put to me is um, why mobile production? as opposed to production in any of the other game fields as such. Why mobile particularly? Um, that boils down to two categories for me essentially. The first was, um, the most obvious is, mobile has unique challenges to overcome. Um, and what it is, is, is it's things like a multitude of handsets, there's literally thousands out there. When you're developing a game that has to cover a very big span, that in itself is quite a feat. One of the other things is we have a lot of uh, providers. Those are the people that go out there you can download your game from, whether it be Telstra or um, most of our uh, product is, is, is all shipped overseas. So it will be the overseas ca uh, carriers in this particular um, instance. And they have their own kind of stipulations. Stipulations like size of the packets that would be sent over their network. You can only make a game for 300K, um, condense as much as you can into their content, voice, video, that kind of thing. Uh, they also have other stipulations like you have to include the game and game lobby, things like this, their own um, online feature sets. Uh, and then all this adds up to usually a very high um, QA outlook on any one given project. Now, I've managed directly from the start, these are the kind of challenges that you hit up right from the word go. And uh, what any good producing mobile will do is, is, is look out for this and try and minimize a lot of these kind of costs up front. Um, then there is the second part, which to me is the varying project sizes and timelines. Um, that is essentially how I chose my four case studies today. It's not so much on the merit of uh, whether they were high profile or not. It's just the fact that I'd like to illustrate the differences between these projects, both in team sizes, timelines, and then their unique challenges. Bearing in mind, like I said, all four have been completed over the last two year cycle of this. And they're not the only four that were done. Um, so what that does is, for me it's ideal working in mobile production because of um, the ability to run multiple projects at one time. Uh, obviously that does depend on whether or not your, your producer is good at multitasking, but um, it's, it's, it's a great cost effective uh, production method um, that we at least find and definitely employ. Um, so, in one word, I would say why mobile is because of the options that it delivers to me. Um, and with that, let's move on to our first case study. Uh, many people will probably recognize that I've been straight up front. That's uh, just one of those. Um, what it is is um, Tinkerbell, the brief for this, for this game, was um, we were approached by the uh, publisher, Disney, and said, right, we're making a platform game, Tinkerbell. We're looking at um, four environments, 12 levels, gym pickups, uh, additional unlockable content, uh, bonus levels, things like that. Um, what I could get for myself was two engineers, one full-time, one part-time, uh, an artist, and then obviously QA. We won't QA on every project, but uh, it's usually the next phase of the very hard one. Timeline, three months. Start to finish game, three months, that's what you have. We were trying to... Um, get it to coincide with the new Tinkerbell DVD release, if I recall, for home. And uh, so, like I mentioned, publisher was Disney. And then the challenge around that is obviously a three-month development cycle. There are not a lot of places where you can get a three-month development cycle start to finish on a, on a full product. Um, and then uh, working with Disney, this is, this is a, 
a company notorious for um, very hard and fast approval methods for their style, their, um, their look and feel of the things. And that's something to overcome within your three month period. Uh, and then obviously the game is going to ship out of Groove and JSR184. Um, so essentially it's, it's two different SKUs for us that um, we, we, we have to work between. So that was the brief. I'll give you a bit of a taste on the, the reality of the project. Um, with a short timeline on the back, you need to find ways to cut costs. And uh, the first thing we did was grab an old existing Star Trek engine. We ramped it up a little bit. It's already um, supported scrolling and uh, side scrolling and parallel scrolling. So that we could, uh, from the first word go, start instituting something, work around the game design, um, <coughs> get content in there as quickly as possible. Um, one month in, we uh, hit our first bound when the randomized level generation, which was the basis of the design of this game, changed because the publisher didn't like the idea of random. Didn't tell them that these gems were coming along. We tried to explain it's the nature of random. We don't tell what's coming along. But uh, he didn't see it that way and he wanted structured design. So one week in a third of the way into my production on this one, we had to change the core engine and how it worked with us. So fine enough, we do that. Uh, added a little bit of a um, complication is uh, when the publisher likes to fly out and join the team, irrespective of what anybody says, whether you're doing good or bad, the extra set of eyes does tend to have a bit of an um, effect on the team itself. So generally I don't try and encourage it, but you don't turn around and say no either. Uh, we did successfully manage to um, change the core of the engine and get it to accommodate the new level designs, which was uh, really, really good because Marcus, the guy who was um, the producer on our end, uh, we actually ended up making him smile with that whole idea, which was, which was really nice because I thought from the beginning he was a bit of a, a hard case. Um, so that makes um, uh, uh, the approval process, sorry, I'm The approval process was um, much quicker than anticipated, which was really good. Like I said, three month cycle and approvals with Disney is uh, not something you can always just rely on, it's going to happen. And at the end of the day, we had a very happy publisher who I can still count on as a client today, and we still in talks with future content and this kind of thing. So that was the reality of it. And then what I like to do is show the results. Um, there was sound with the little video, but uh, that's an idea uh, of what the end content looked like, that little video running down there, um, and one of the reviews that we got. Now this is for a, this is for a game that took three months from start to finish. Um, just a casual button, you know, one button game for um, Youngsters mainly, that was our target audience. Um, and overall, we hit our target, which was great. And we were happy with what we came up with in three months. It is an extremely great timeline to go and change design halfway through and things like that. Uh, but then again, there's not many other places I can go to where I can run a complete project start to finish in three months. That was the first of our case studies. Uh, probably a little more well known uh, from Fire Inside was um, we worked on Matic 07. Uh, this is mostly for the US, and then there's a couple of mad and I'm sure, running around on this end. But generally, this is a US product for us. It comes as a very high profile product. Uh, mad in itself is probably one of EA's biggest selling licenses. So, when we were pitching on this one, that was a pretty big deal for us. Now, to give you a kind of idea how, how the Madden project broke down for us, Fireman, is obviously it's a sports game. 32 teams, we had full season, we had motion capture, um, we had, we had uh, uh, 11 versus 11, so that's 22 players running on the, on, on the screen at any given time, that's a lot of updating and rendering this kind of stuff. We had a lot of big challenges, this was going to be a very ambitious project for us, but uh, never anybody to shy away from the challenge, this is what we took on. Um, the personnel allocated to a project of this size is, as you can see, considerably larger than what, what I had for Tinkerbell. Five full-time engineers, two artists, and animators who work with a lot of the uh, motion capture and so on that they had out there. Um, and then our QA tag on to the end of that. Timeline for this was 10 months. That's a, that's a pretty decent timeline in the mobile industry. We tend to average around eight being the, the, 